Now, I want to move on to Brexit because you told my colleague Faisal Islam um, earlier this week um, that certain pro-Brexit Conservative MPs are acting like Russia on the UN Security Council, vetoing everything that they don't like. What, what did you mean by that? What I mean is that in the end, there's going to be need, need to be give and take. And the voices that we tend to hear in Brexit are passionate, understandably, but they tend to be on the, the, the kind of wings of the argument, either very passionate that this was a big mistake and we should be going back into Europe and getting rid of this result. I don't agree with that. Or very passionate that we've now got the vote and we absolutely have to deal on it, deliver on it in its most purest form. I don't agree with that either. What we need is something that is politically sustainable and that respects the result, but actually recognises that if we don't deliver a conservative Brexit, in other words, it has our values at its heart, as in a strong economy, well-managed public finances, opportunity, then actually it won't be something, I believe, that carries the whole country. I represent one of the youngest constituencies in the whole country. In fact, it is the youngest constituency demographically alongside Battersea. And unless you make it work for communities like mine, as those voters get older and they form a bigger part of the electorate, they will simply demand a change. So and I don't think saying, spending then? the next 10 to 15 years as a country continuing to debate and argue about our relationship with our European neighbours will serve this country's future well. We need to resolve this debate and argument now. We need to put the divisions it's created behind us and we need to look ahead and debate what's the kind of country we want to be after Brexit. That is the most important thing to me.